Uh, we are now super excited to invite uh, our class of 2022 on stage to present their newly taken on commitments. So warm, wa warm welcome up on stage, Carl Dahlén, CO4 Securitas. <laughs> Elisabeth Besko, CO4 DNB Sweden. <laughs> Freddy Subin, CO4, CO uh, Kix, soon to be XXL. Yeah. <laughs> Jan Dannestam, CO4 Mannheim & Svartling. Joakim Skarborg, CEO for Novax. And Sofia Götmar Blomstedt, CEO of PwC Sweden. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Great, welcome. We're here. Oh, wow. We started our work in August. So we've had about six, seven months together, uh, working and inspiring each other and challenging each other. Um, and, uh, and as a group, you've landed in two pretty strong commitments, uh, very strong commitments. Um, and um, as the first group had been working internally, you uh, in the organization, you wanted to go outside the ex and, and, and take an external take on this. And you landed in the, you know, putting together a blueprint for d &I in the boardroom and also grassroots inclusion. So let's hear a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. so let's start with the d in the boardroom. And for all of us who are not sitting, or are not CEOs, or sitting in boards, Joachim, could you explain what this is important um, topic for, for the board, to have the d on the agenda? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, putting this topic at the board agenda serves a lot of purposes. I think one, the obvious one, is obviously you know, the signaling effect. What's, what gets discussed at the board level hopefully becomes important in the organization. I also think it has to do with uh, accountability, making sure there is strong accountability for these issues all the way through the governance structure uh, up until the board. Uh, personally, I think the most important reason, though, is to uh, well, if you, if you think about the role of the board in a company, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, some of the key responsibilities revolve around making sure there's an adequate vision and strategy for the company, making sure there's a leadership to deliver on that strategy, and making sure there's a solid governance. Mm -hmm. And I think by including it in the annual board calendar, sort of very clearly ingrains the issue in the strategic development of the company making sure it's not a staple on solution or something we do outside of our day jobs, but really making sure, no, this is a huge question in making sure we can deliver on our, our targets and goals. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most important question of all, to really build it into, I think, even though it's not a similar topic, but if you think about digitalization, we started talking about it. Well, we have a guy or a girl who, who works with you know, digital stuff, Today, it's, you know, it's, it's in every activity we do. I think D&I, sustainability, other big changes mm -hmm. that we have to adapt and adopt to, uh, they need to become part of the everyday strate strategy. And I think you know, a lot of the previous speakers have had, you know, attested to this in, in, various, in various ways. Mm -hmm. So that's from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, and based on the discussions that we were having and the, the need for putting a blueprint in place, many, many boards don't know how to tackle uh, mm -hmm. this question. And we actually held an event or were speaking at an event with about 300 board members recently and asked the question, how many know what diversity and inclusion are and, um, and how many have a diversity and inclusion strategy? And Sophia, how many hands did we get up out of 300? Maybe seven, 10? Mm -hmm. So that was an indication for us as well that this is so critical and that the boards kind of, they need this blueprint, they need to know how to do it. So uh, with the inspiration from the six of you, we then looked at the fundamentals model that Mitleave has been offering to the organizations to give them a structure and tailored that to the board work. And, uh, and most of the aspects and segments in that model um, are very similar, adapted to the, the board. Uh, the operations aspect that Lenka talked about earlier with the structures, et cetera, that gets tailored a little bit further to the governance, as you were talking about, Joachim. 
And, um, and then we identified three first level actions. And they were the, first of all, give the board training. Know what they're talking about. What is diversity and inclusion and why does it impact their organizations? Second, actually request a review of how the organization is working with diversity and inclusion to, to start that accountability. And then number three, to plan a, and hold a strategical workshop where we're actually aligning for that accountability and planning a route forward together with the management team. So that's the commitment that, we, that we've put in place that we're wanting to inspire more uh, CEOs and boards to do. Let's hear a little bit about how, what are your intentions, uh, the six of you on, within your own companies, on the boards you sit in, both your company board and the other board you're sitting in. Um, Sophia, would you like to start? Um, I fully agree with what Joachim said here. Uh, we can work a lot with uh, inclusion and diversity within the management team, and we really try, all of us, uh, to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is all about accountability, and it's all about to get it fully included in the strategy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of companies and organizations nowadays talk about having a sustainable strategy, not mm -hmm. like a sustain a sustainable strategy and a strategy, yep. but a combined strategy. Yep. And I think this is really an important topic to include inclusion and diversity in the strategy. And then we need to get the board mm. um, on board yep. <laughs> in this. And in my organization, it's the board is actually um, uh, my partner colleagues mm. uh, within the firm. And that's even more important because those partners are also client-facing people working with our teams. Mm. So if they're not engaged in this, then we will not have the full effect in the organization mm. at speed. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Sophia. Shall we go to you, Carl? Would you like to? Absolutely. Uh, no, I totally agree with what's, what's been said. And and I think it's it's one, uh, you know, to put it on the agenda that we heard now that from Novus that, you know, it's it's getting on the agenda and we are, we are getting the sense of urgency. And, and, and we have also done that. So diversity and inclusion is sort of one of our five global, you know, uh, development goals when it, when it comes to sustainability. But the other one is, the, you know, when you when you start working, it, you know, we need to help all the people and, you know, what are the ways uh, and the actions to move forward. And therefore, I think, you know, the, the three we're looking at her here are really important to get everyone on board and really, you know, feel that, okay, what are the actions that I can take? What are the actions that we can take as a management team to really get it going? Because, you know, I think we, we have the sense of urgency, but we are not taking the actions yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that, that's what I see is, is really critical for us yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you sit on a lot of boards, is my understanding, and uh, with the different companies in the portfolio group. How, how are you looking at tackling this? Um, well, I, I, th I mean, I, I think this needs, to, as I said, this needs to be a very important part of a strategy. And if you, uh, to me, it's, it's a matter of time perspective. If you're trying to solve a problem for the next two weeks, perhaps you don't have to think that much about this question. But we're very, very long-term owners. We aspire to own our companies for 50 or 100 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you look at a strategy from that lens and that perspective, you need to sit down and think about what do we need to be able to you know, be long-term uh, success successful. And then it's pretty obvious that this is an issue we have to sort out. If we want to become the best in the world of you know, whatever our company is doing, mm -hmm. we need to think about how to really excel in this area as well. So I think if, if you approach it from that perspective and take a little longer term view, uh, I think the pieces fall together quite, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking um, everything starts from the top. Uh, and I think that was uh, one of the key things that we discussed in the beginning. If the board has the toolbox mm. in order to drive the organization, mm. then you know everything goes so much smoother. Then you have one person who is DNI responsible, uh, trying to make wonders. But if it starts from the top, so I think the tone from the top is so important. But also the connection with that we 
actually makes make better business, uh, that it drives profitability, that it drives innovation when it comes. And I think that is an understanding that we really, really, really need to make the boards understand. And for us, who works with customers, and, and uh, today the the analysis when it comes to sustainability, where diverse to, diversity and inclusion is extremely important, this is also a part of our advisory to our customers, yeah. and, and we actually rate customers how well they do this. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, start, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Jan? Yeah. <coughs> I fully agree. Uh, we heard from the previous panel uh, that, that it's so important to have all the young individuals and uh, the base of the company, everyone to be involved, but I fully agree with Elizabeth. We, we also, first of all, you need the tone from the top because to endorse all this, I mean, and also make people aware of that you're measured on this, you have to deliver. Mm. Uh, and I mean, li like um, Sophia, I'm from a partner organization, being a law firm. So I mean, all the, par all, all the board members are partners, but also we have 88 partners who, who also have to deliver this, this knowledge. And also I think, <coughs> I mean, uh, I, I'm a, a true believer in, in uh, a rather action run talking, but I think this is a topic we really need to talk about mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. and it's not a rocket science. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, everywhere, it's like strategy. I mean, we, we know what to do. Mm. The, 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 the challenge here is to get everyone to do it mm. because yeah. in recruitment situations and things like that, we tend to be attractive of people who are very similar mm. to yourself. Uh, so you have to get rid of all these unconscious bias and everything about that. But I also, uh, <coughs> now, uh, when I got the microphone, I also say I'd, I was so... <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> I we're will stop. stop. <laughs> um, no, but I, I ju just a very short story. Yeah. I, I talked to a very senior uh, Swedish politician earlier, this, a minister, actually. And I was so depressed when I, I asked uh, this, this person about the crime, uh, mm. which is, I mean, to start there, to mm. start, mm. we will come to that soon in mm. the in, uh, mm. underprivileged areas. Mm. But why don't you come to a conclusion with all the parties? Don't, re don't bother the color of your party. Just make yeah. a 25, 30, 40 year mm. decision together so you, don't, so you can get rid of the blame game. Yeah. Mm. But then it's so sad because the basics for all politics is seek conflict. Yeah. Mm. Because if you seek conflict, then you can, you can market your own ideas. Mm -hmm. And so the reason, the, the, and it's for, from a, coming from a business perspective, well, we all agree, let's do business together. Mm. While from a politician, mm. well, we agree so much, so uh, okay, we, if we are doing this, we have to do it by ourselves. Yeah. So we don't endorse our, our competitors in, from a political perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think we as, as businesses, we have a, we have a very special um, responsibility to actually do all this. Yeah. So yeah. this makes this even more, I, I realized when I talked to him, well, this I'm doing on, on Thursday in Gothenburg is even yeah. more important yeah. Yeah. because you're not going to do this. No. We have to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, when I joined Kix and the Axel Johnson Group about five years ago, I had the privilege actually to join a company which were already doing this work mm. uh, because the owners were expecting it. They were already having these values. Mm -hmm. And now for the last five years, we've tried to do more to accelerate this and to learn from it. And now when transitioning into a new company, what I'll try to do is kind of take those learnings, take those practices, also the insights from the great CEO program that we've had for the last year, and really to bring that with me um, mm -hmm. to see how we can accelerate and leapfrog DNI in my new company that I'm joining. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as CEO, you seldom get to tell the board what to do; it's rather the opposite. <laughs> uh, but at least you know you can have a strong voice and opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I'll do my best to really get you know XXL Sports and Outdoor to to do the same within DNI. I think it's mm -hmm. just so crucial. Yeah. And I've really seen through my years in Kicks both the power and the business value uh, when you do this. Yeah. Mm. So I think with that kind of confidence and determination, um, you know, I am I hope to get my new board on board with this program as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's my aim. So yeah. I think the board, I've seen the value of them being engaged and I, I, you know, it needs to be happening in more places and more companies. Yeah. Yeah. We should start another program, Board for DNI. I think <laughs> we should. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Fendi. Thank you, yeah. So we have a second commitment, which Jan a little al already introduced us to, and it's about grassroots inclusion. So uh, it's based uh, in the Sw Swedish society and the challenges that the young, marginalized 
um, youth are facing in our country. And this has been very important for you to discuss and, and also um, find a way to, to scale your engagement within. And uh, those numbers behind us is not something we are very proud of in Sweden, but they are the fact for us. So we have to relate to those numbers. But we also know that it's easy to get stuck in, in what went wrong and the problems when it comes to those discussions and not find solutions. And as we know, we have COs, you're result driven, you are solution driven. And also that education, uh, we have job opportunities, internships, network and role models are crucial to get this work done. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Uh, yeah. Carl, do you want to tell us a little bit about how the discussions went and how you landed in just this being so important? No, but I think, I mean, John mentioned a, a couple of things on that, that we kind of early in our discussions felt that, you know, okay, politicians are trying to solve a problem, but they won't be able to solve it on their own. I mean, we, we need to contribute heavily from, from the business society. I mean, we have... Um, I mean, we don't have an inclusive labor market right now. Uh, we have too many people that, uh, you know, are, n you know, not having a job and haven't had it for many years, especially in some suburbs. Uh, too many people that, you know, are overqualified for the jobs that they are having. Uh, and, and, and for that reason, also too many people that don't feel included in the society as a whole. And, you know, I, even more worrying, you know, are not having a, a clear hope for the future mm. Mm. and that we collectively need to change. So that was something, you know, that we felt that, okay, we need to contribute both from our companies, but also to sort of influence the whole business society that, mm -hmm. you know, mm. we have, uh, we need to make a strong commitment. We have a huge responsibility to change this. Mm. Uh, and, and, to put it in a more positive, I think you know th there 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 is at the same time a large potential. We have a large uh, group of people that can contribute a lot to the society if we can just get them into a job. Mm. And and here you know we will, as uh, Sophia said in the beginning, we can create you know the win-win-win for mm. for the people, for our companies, and and for the society. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Elizabeth, do you want to just fill in a little bit more with regards to like, the importance of this work for the businesses? Absolutely. And I, I, I think, uh, I mean, Pad has already shown that uh, talent is even distributed, opportunities are not. Um, and getting people in with different perspective, again, drives innovation, mm. uh, drives um, you know, so much more into our business. And I think actually that we become more profitable if we, if we, if we manage that. Mm. But I, I also think from, from, um, from my position and all of our position, I mean, we are so privileged mm. in, in what we are doing. And I think using our strength to support society in this change is so important so for me it's, it's about also to be a role model um, and driving the inclusive leadership I think um, forward Th that's um, the key mm. Mm. Yeah. Ah. yeah and uh, when we get this started uh, we are curious about what you wish to achieve by this work so let's take a round Sophia uh, I think all of us try to do things in our organizations right right now, and it's very clear to us. We this is like the topic we have discussed all times we have met. Mm -hmm. uh, like Jan said, we need to do something as um, business, uh, in 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 um, um, because we can't rely on that the politicians will solve this by themselves, and it is extremely complicated because. We tend to say, like, this is so complicated, so we don't know where to start. Mm. Uh, and I think what we talked about was how could we do the small things? And if mm. we add up the small things mm. with 3,000 within PwC, and we're doing different things with, like, Ukraine, we're doing things in, in um, um, Yerva and on different uh, levels, uh, we also have two sustainability days for each of our, our employees since the last couple of years, where we actually can spend two days each doing something for society mm. and something for our own sustainability. Mm. And if we could 
use those days together with all those days mm. that all my colleagues here have, mm. then we should really make make an impact mm. at speed, which mm. we it, it is difficult to to see the result of what we are doing if we're doing all those small things every day. Mm. But by this initiative, we will probably, a year from now, see that we actually could have done some kind of impact to try to solve the really challenging problems with which we actually have today in society with uh, both inclusion and, and diversity, of course, but also um, how the society looks like with, mm. with um, criminality and, and so on. Mm. So and that's, we, that's we, what I yeah. we wish for. And we will push you hard this year, we promise. <laughs> Um, no, I, I completely agree, and I, I think this this is obviously a very, very frustrating mm. situation for many people, mm. for many aspects. I, from you know, one frustrating thing is there are many things we need to do to solve this problem, but some of them you can probably hear me anyway, right? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. s some of the things we have to do are not hard. There's a matching problem mm. at the core of all of this. People. Uh, you know, person A can't meet person B. Mm. That's easily fixed by, by companies. Mm. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is there's been a debate on whether the business society has a responsibility at all. Uh, I, I find that debate quite weird. Obviously, we have a responsibility. Mm. Call it what you want. But yes, we need to pitch in here. And I, for me, I hope that beyond concrete results, we can also inspire m a movement mm. in the business society that yes, we have a responsibility for this, and we can, yeah. we can actually get engaged. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> for I'd say it's for us. It's about uh, doing well while doing good. Mm. Uh, it's not only the responsibility. I fully agree on that, but it's also. Uh, from a pure egoistical perspective, we're a consultancy firm. We need to reflect the society in general. Mm -hmm. um, for us, as a consultancy firm, 90% of the people we hire uh, must have a university degree, uh, and most of them uh, from law school. The problem for us has been uh, that uh, the graduates from, from law schools and from universities, have not, they have not reflected society at large. Uh, so we, we had to initiate the program there to get people through school. So we have a mentoring program for people just when they start uh, senior high school, <coughs> gymnasiet, uh, in uh, uh, less fortunate areas, and give them a mentor. We we train them in how to study, in how to presentation techniques, in rhetorics. Mm. Um, uh, we invite them to study visits to the co clients who are cooler than we are, <laughs> tech <laughs> companies, fintech companies, fashion companies, to, to really see to give them a carrot to see wh what's there if I go to university, mm. hopefully law school if from, from our perspective, but at least going through a high e higher education to, to, to um, actually increase the, the diversity and inclusion in the Swedish businesses, uh, that, that will give us so much. Um, and we also included their parents in this mm. program actually, yeah. mm. uh, because we wanted them to commit, but so to put pe pressure on the parents. Mm. Uh, not everyone in these, of course, have two parents, but at least they should show with one parent, uh, because then they will put pressure on this as well. And as one of these students told me uh, wh when we had them at our firm <laughs> in our Stockholm office, as law, all law firms have very fancy offices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, she said, wow, I never thought in my life that I would enter a building like this. Mm. Uh, and it makes you feel so good because mm. then, you, I mean, in Sweden, of all countries, mm. everyone can get a higher education mm. because it's free of, uh, free of charge. Mm. So uh, again, we know what to do, but we just have to remind each other. And that's coming back to a long answer. Coming back to your question, uh, uh, the upside of this program, both remind ourselves that we have so much we can do, mm. and also hopefully, as you said, Joachim, uh, uh, inspire uh, our colleagues. Mm. Thank you. I think going back to the discussions in the group during the program, we talked a lot about bis you know, strengthening the credibility that business and the private sector actually has a role to play, and it's mm. a force for good and a power in this topic, in the DNI topic. And I think when discussing it like that, we can't only say that we're going to work you know, top down from the boards because boards are working in closed rooms and it's a small group of people. Mm. I think 
also acknowledging that change comes also bottoms up. Yeah. So change meeting top down and bottoms up. Mm. And, and we need to then walk the walk. We can't yeah. only talk. So then we need to be out there ourselves working with you to get them you know, more into society. And I think in the roles that we have, we have a fantastic situation to influence, to power, mm. to help them out, really. So I think the kind of credibility part goes both ways, both top down and bottoms up. Mm. And I think that's why we landed in these two actions and mm. commitments. Mm. Um, and then for me, I think that, that, you know, once again, not only talking, but also walking mm. is just so important. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very good. I, and I think this is what gives me have given me, given me the most to to meet extremely you know talented people that uh, have kind of the same vision. Uh, and I have to say I have an amazing team um, at uh, at DNB. And uh, sometimes about stopping them doing too much uh, and <laughs> doing the right thing. And I know that sounds crazy, but but you know it's it's so many initiatives. So mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we can deliver on them and I think that what has happened within the organization during this year is that we have become much more practical mm -hmm. and that is a feedback that we get from from our staff that yes you've been talking about this and you've been training us and you have the strategy and you 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 have this or people coming to us and, and telling us how to do it mm -hmm. but right now we are taking action uh, with uh, study help and, and and really trying to to be much more practical in uh, and walk the walk uh, much much more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, finally, uh, no, no, but <laughs> we, we also see this as, as part of our purpose. The purpose from Securitas is to, to help make your world a safer place. That's what we're trying to do with, you know, all our, our people every day. And, and uh, you know, succeeding in, you know, the diversity and inclusion is really critical in, in you know, creating the safer place for people, both in terms of, you know, in general for everyone, and also, you know, getting, you know, in, in uh, when we call, talk about the grassroots and get everyone on board, because then we will really succeed also in not, you know, uh, you know, getting a safer place for everyone, feeling, you know, safer in everything they do. And I think mm -hmm. that is really critical. And, and, and here we try our utmost in terms of, you know, how can we contribute? And, you know, we're doing things already, but we can do a lot more. And, and also, for example, uh, we, we try to focus on it in, in our recruitment processes because, you know, last year we recruited more than 2,000 people uh, in, in, in Sweden. And how can we ensure that we create diverse teams at, at, mm. at, at all times? But mm. I think it's, it's important to say what, you know, what, 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 what Jim said in the beginning, that this is uh, really about a step-by-step. -step. Even, you know, the smaller step in the right direction, that's a good step. So mm. really that, you know, we as, uh, you know, in our company, but, but also in, in, in all other companies, that we mm. collectively, you know, take steps forward, then, you know, large things will mm. happen. Mm. Mm. And to, to just challenge you last time here. Uh, what is your biggest or most important takeaway as a group, you think, um, for the work ahead? One word. <laughs> Ac action. Action. Yeah. Hope. Hope. Mm. Uh, determination. Mm. Cool. Opportunity. Mm. Ah, momentum, perhaps. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're really stronger together. To oh, learn. wow. Yay. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. so R great. Really, words. really good. And from a point of view of like the second group now, um, class of 22, um, and uh, and really contributing to the work that has already been done on the internal perspective with group uh, one. Um, and now I think it was Freddie, you said it, you know, higher up at the top, grassroots as well. And that combination is going to be magical to see what happens when you're back on stage this time next year. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it is pretty amazing to see how this CEOs for Denai movement grows. 
And uh, we are therefore so happy and proud to announce our class of 2023, who start autumn after summer, our work together, uh, and uh, with a global focus and competence need, role modeling as CEOs uh, at the global level. Um, and uh, with the challenging, with the challenge, challenge of acting in different countries with different legislation, and within different cultures. So in one year, we learn from class two on stage, and class three will present their results. Mm. So we will warm welcome Helene Melkvist, CEO for Volvo Penta, Jakob Jankowski, CEO for IKEA Industry, Martin Malmvik, CEO for Axe Inter. Elisabeth Peregi, who we have with us here today, CEO for Capol. Jonas Steffensson, CEO Nexa Enterprise Applications, and Paula Da Silva, CEO Nordic Payments. Mm. And it's going to be so incredibly exciting to see what this group then can contribute to the work which has already been done. Um, and uh, yeah, we can't wait to get that started. So thank you very much. And we'll hand back over to Madeleine. Thank you.